One of the problems with having great statistical software like R is that it's really, really easy to do the test. I could read in the data and do the test in just two lines of code. However, it's probably not a good idea to just take data and blindly be running tests on it because most statistical tests have certain assumptions about the data that have to be met before you can actually consider yourself to have done a valid test. So for each statistical test you're working with, you should always be aware of what the assumptions are of each test. So let's take a few moments and look at what the assumptions are of the t-test of means. There are actually three main assumptions that should be true in order to have a valid t-test of means. The first one is that the two sample groups that you are testing or that you're measuring are independent of each other that the measurements you make in one of your groups is not affecting the measurements that you make in the other group. So in this example, we've been using the measurements of men and the measurements of women should be independent. This is something that you can really only know by just looking at your experimental design. There's not some kind of test that we could do on the numbers to find out whether this is true or not. The other two assumptions we can actually test with statistical software. So the second assumption is that each of the two groups, in this case, the heights of men and the heights of women are normally distributed. The second thing is that the variances of the two, two, two groups are the same. These requirements of independence and normal distribution equal variance, these are the kinds of requirements that are very typical for what we call parametric tests. If we want to test this second assumption of the t-test of means, the assumption of normality, there are several ways that we can do that. We can do it graphically by either generating a histogram or a normal quantile plot. We can also carry out a statistical test called the Shapiro-Wilkes test, and that will actually give us a numeric assessment of whether our data are normal or not. The first method for taking a look at whether the data are normally distributed is to simply make a histogram of the heights. We really want to know whether both the data in the men's group and the data in the women's height group are normally distributed. So we need to test each one of them separately. In order to pull out the men's heights, I'm going to use the filter function from the Diplier library, which we used in an earlier lesson. So just to recall, to pull out certain rows out of a data frame, you use filter and then you give the name of the data frame. Then you give the uh, Boolean condition under which the rows will be selected. So here I want rows that are in the grouping column that have values of men. So if I run this to load the Diplier library, and then run this. If I take a look at men, I can see that I have a data frame which has only the rows with the data from the men in it. I can then create a histogram simply by using the hist function. And that produces a histogram over in the plots window. Another thing that you can do to make a sort of uh, easier to look at histogram is to use the density function. The density will basically calculate the curve of your data, but it uses a curve smoothing function. So I'm going to go ahead and run that first and then have it plot this smoothed curve and when I do that, I can see that I end up essentially having a smoothed over version of the histogram. So here's the histogram, here's the smooth version. So when I look at this, I can see it's not perfectly normal, but it's like fairly close to no a bell-shaped curve. So that looks fairly good. Another thing that I can do that is a, perhaps a better way to evaluate the shape of the curve and whether it's actually nor a normal curve is to create a normal quantile plot. And you can do that with this function, qqnorm. So for qqnorm, you pass in the data that you want to test. In this case, it's the height column. And then you have to have this data x uh, value set to true. 
So when we run that, the normal quantile plot, if it's perfectly normal, will be straight. So we can see that this line is fairly straight, so it looks pretty good in terms of our data being normal. If we want to actually determine uh, mathematically whether it is significantly different from normal or not, we can run the Shapiro-Wilkes test. The Shapiro-Wilkes test is just simply Shapiro.test and all we have to do is pass in the column that we want to test. So let's go ahead and do that. We can see that our p-value is 0.7756. That's nowhere close to 0.05. So we can see that there is not a significant difference from normality. So based on all these results, it looks like it's fairly safe to do, use the uh, results here uh, for the men and assume that they are normally distributed. If we want to then test the women's, we can just simply uh, run the same set of commands, only this time uh, separate out the rows which have a value in the grouping variable column of women. So if we do that, uh, create a density plot that looks like this. We create a normal quantile plot. Ooh, it's a little bit not exactly straight, but if we do Shapiro's test, we can see that um, it's not as high as it was with men, but it's still quite a bit above 0.05. So it should be safe, relatively safe, to uh, assume that both of these groups are normally distributed. It turns out that the t-test is not very sensitive to deviations from normality. So your data can actually deviate quite a bit from being normal, and you can still get a good evaluation of whether your two groups are different or not.